In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through the process of creating shows. Start by entering your project overview and open up a new project. In the previous tutorial, we created our scene setup, which we will now start working with. Enter the name of your show. You can add as many shows as you like inside of a project. We'll go ahead and add a few more. By pressing and holding the name of your show, you can choose to either rename or delete it. You can rearrange the order of the shows by selecting and using the arrows to the left. Let's start to work with our first show that we named Song 1. The first step is to add a cue to the show. A cue can be described as a timeline with a series of events that take place during that time. We call these events lines. A cue is either triggered by a push on the fire button of the G2 unit, or it can be triggered from the start of an external timecode. Click on the Add button to fill your queue with lines. When you add a line, the starting time will automatically be set to zero and it will be empty from any other settings. By entering the timer, you can choose a few different options. The system's internal clock will start running as soon as you hit the fire button. When using an external timecode, the script will start once the system receives a timecode signal. Let's add another queue to our show. The system will allow you to fire two queues at the same time. This feature can be used when you want to start a series of events that will go on during a longer period, while at that same time you want another new series of events to start off too. The system allows you to run maximum two queues at the same time. Let's set the address for your lines. Click the pencil. To the right you see your lines, and to the left you see your units added to the scene setup. In this example we're going to set off all six lines at the same time with the four field modules. Go ahead and select the line you wish to program. Pick a field module and select the outlet you wish to assign. The effect that you've picked will now show up on the first line. Go ahead and add some more effects to the rest of your lines. We've now programmed the outlets 001A, 001B, 002A, 003A, 004A, and 004B to all set off simultaneously in one queue when you hit the fire button. They're set to fire on the time show to the right. Go back to see your completed firing script for the first queue. We can now start to work on our second queue. This time we'll go for a chase with our aerosol flame units connected to our relay boxes. When working with the chase, you can add some additional variables for the event. Go ahead and hit the set button and navigate to the total time option. Here you'll see a few different options that we can use when creating this event. In this case, we want our chase to fire eight flames with a one second delay between them. To the right you see the starting time of each line, which will be your flames. Enter the edit mode to assign the address of your lines. Select a line, pick a type of unit and assign the outlet you plan to use on the selected line. Since this is a relay box with a flame unit connected, we can fire these outlets as many times as we like. Next we need to set the time for our units to be open, meaning the time the system will send electrical power to the unit, which in this case will result in a flame. Hit the multi-edit button. Make sure you have selected the queue you wish to edit and hit select all in the drop down menu. Check the settings box and put in the desired time for the unit to open. 
For a chase with flame units, 0.3 seconds is a good setting for the opening time. Save and close, and you will see that the whole chase will now be set with 1 second delay and 0.3 seconds of opening time for your flames. You can also reach the time options by clicking the edit pencil and changing the settings one at a time. We have now added a first queue with six lines where all effects fire at the same time, and a second queue where we have programmed a chase with flame units. Now let us add some DMX units to our next song. In this example we want to use our fog machine with chilled low-lying fog. Go ahead and add a queue with two lines. Click the pencil and select a line you wish to assign. Go to DMX and you will see the devices added to your library. Click on the fog machine to see the channels of the device. This is where we can make the settings of our channels. And here you see the start level, the stop level, the fade in, the hold level, the hold time, and the fade out. In this case, I want the chilling of the fog to go on for 2 minutes, which equals 120 seconds. Hit Assign to save the setting. When the chiller has been active for 30 seconds, I want to trigger the fog. Click the pencil, DMX, Low Fog, and choose Fog. First we need to set the delay time of our fog to ensure that the fog is triggered after the 30 seconds of chilling. And after that we can set the amount of time for the machine to produce fog. Set the hold time for 90 seconds and click Assign Setting. Our queue is now timed for a total of 120 seconds, where the first line is used to chill the fog for 2 minutes, and the second line with a 30 second delay and an active 90 seconds is used to produce a nice low-lying fog while the chilling is still active. Let's add some cues to our next song. This time, I think we'll add some CO2 jets to our show. In this cue, we want our four jets to each go off twice with the quick burst during a chase. So add a cue, click set, choose a one second delay, add a number of eight lines and click OK. Click the pencil on your first line. Choose DMX. Click the magic effects switchback and select one of the jets that has been added to our library. Set the hold time for 0.5 seconds and click assign setting. Keep filling up your remaining lines until the chase is completed. Now we just set the hold time for our lines individually, but we can also apply these settings to all lines inside of a queue simultaneously by using the multi-function feature. Go to multi-edit, select all, edit, click the settings box and set the desired hold time. And as you can see, the opening time or hold time has now been changed to 0.5 seconds. The switchback that we've chosen to use has a safety channel which needs to be active to be able to let the other channels to function. Now we can either choose to trigger the safety channel as a first line in this queue or we can choose to trigger the safety from the system wing which I will show you in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to show you how to run shows, create a backup queue, and to program the system wing.